Hello everyone. So as you can read from the description, um, Christian was unable to sadly get into StreamYard. He can't do unlimited streaming, kind of similar to how, like how me and Blitz can, but um, we're going to make the most of it here because, well, if you were around and stuff, he has started another different channel and he's trying to like get himself back up, which he has been doing a great job with. We're still always rooting for him, but well, I mean, like, you know, it, it is a really scary thing, but we're here to like make him happy and stuff. Hello, everyone. Yes, like Fresh said, I was trying to do stringer, but for sure, is it wouldn't let me? I said I, I can only change like 24 to 48 hours on what's up with that. So hopefully, I can get that fixed uh, next time. So, yep, here I am. Well, it's it's mostly your plan. That's what that problem is. You have to like get a new plan. Hmm. Okay. So let me just uh, uh, go ahead copy the link to um, my one of my friends and I'll invite him and stuff. So how's your day? Um it's pretty pretty slow, but fine. All right. Uh, I mean, funny thing is I am just keep getting all knocked out and stuff, but I'm awake now. Wait, all right. What? Oh, oh you, you know, like a, a certain somebody who Oh D Bright Baker is now live with some guy named Tom. Yeah, I'm just trying to. Oh, uh, I'll just share the stream. Yeah. Okay, I'll go over here. But what? But once um we get some people here, I guess we just like not. I waste any time dawdling. Even though we kind of like been over, oh wait. I mean, there's there's there's, not, there's nothing else for me to, to say. Blah, 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 blah. Over here, over there, or what about or what about here? Yeah, this is fine. Meet Acura's heroes of performance. Available at the Acura Summer Performance. I wanna take a walk on the wild side. Now nah, I won't stop till I'm satisfied. I just wanna go out. Codename Kids Next Door remains one of the greatest shows to ever grace the Cartoon Network. It follows an organization of highly trained kids working endlessly to combat the tyranny of evil teenagers and adults, all while indulging in the pleasures of birthday cake, candy, and of course, rainbow monkeys. From candy pirates to evil business overlords, we certainly have a large cast of villains. Luckily, the heroic kids next door are here to put the grown-ups to bed. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and this is Codename Kids Next Door, Good to Evil. As usual, we'll be starting with the most pure and working our way down. These characters are the good. The gold medal of good is shockingly going to an adult, Monty Uno, formerly known as Number Zero. Even though he's an adult, Monty remains a kind and caring father who wants the best for his son. He does get most of his parenting advice from the newspaper, but he makes a genuine effort to connect with his son any moment that he can. While being a good parent in the series is a feat in itself, what really lands him this high up is the time he spent as the greatest KND operative in the world, Number Zero. After discovering the book of KND, Number Zero revives the kids next door in order to defeat Grandfather, the greatest threat to kids that the world has ever known, who also happens to be Monty's father. In fact, he defeats Grandfather twice, once as a kid and again as an adult alongside his son. 
Sector 5 and all the rest of the modern-day K&D have Number Zero to thank for the strength of the organization and the freedom that they continue to fight for on a daily basis. He is decommissioned again at the end of Operation Zero, but the K&D allows him and his wife to be recommissioned one last time to see their son join the Galactic Kids next door. Not you know ah. balance of being a good kid and a good adult, and for that, I think it's only right to give him the top spot. In second place, we have Hoagie P. Gilligan, a.k.a. Number 2. The smartest member of Sector 5, Number 2 is possibly the most skilled inventor in the entire show. He's created most of the team's weapons and vehicles, as well as their very sophisticated treehouse. Though he's not exactly a combat specialist, he is an ace pilot capable of mastering any flying machine he comes across. He's also a brilliant detective, as shown in the noir-style episodes, though we know he sometimes embellishes his stories to make himself seem more heroic than he actually was. We know that Number 2 is a genuinely nice kid based on his interactions with his team other kids, and even adults. He's also shown to be a caring quote-unquote father to the lost baby skunk that he and Number 3 find in the bushes during a mission in Operation Camp, and later adopt. He even saves Bradley's life in Operation Hospital after the doctors fail to save him. As far as his relationship with his little brother Tommy, I'd say it's actually pretty standard. He isn't overly mean to Tommy, but his little brother does end up annoying him a lot. Even though Tommy just wants to spend some time with his brother, we can kind of see why he wouldn't want the little stupid... Okay, I went backstage. Especially on a mission. Shoot. Still, number two does end up saving his brother from danger and vice versa, so their relationship as siblings is much better than some other characters. While not unique to him, number two can be a bit cowardly in some situations. He very often tries to retreat from a fight when his first plan of attack fails. But again, his skill lies more in his piloting than his combat abilities. Like every member of Sector 5, Number 2 has an obsession that is also his biggest character flaw, and for him, that obsession is his technology. He values his inventions above all else and considers right, himself well, useless with his gadgets. This is best shown in Operation Amish, yeah. when Number 2 is sent to Sector A to hide him from the splinter cell and is not allowed to use any machines for the duration of his stay. But realistically, being obsessed with inventing new useful machines for his team and improving upon his creations is hardly the worst thing in the world. In fact, it's safe to say that his engineering prowess is one of the biggest contributing factors to Sector 5's success in all areas. And for that, he earns the Silver Medal of Good. Appropriately enough, in third place we have Number 3. While normally she may be the happiest, kindest, most adorable thing on the planet, she has been shown to have an angrier, almost demonic side to her. It usually comes out whenever someone insults or damages her stuffed animals, after which she will literally burn with rage, much like a certain series main antagonist. There was also that time she turned her house into an active volcano and became its fiery overlord after her father told her she couldn't touch the thermostat, which is a pretty extreme way of dealing with a cold house. Still, pretty much every other time she's on screen, she is incredibly sweet to everyone around her, even to number four, when he's being a huge jerk. She cares for her whole team and her family, including her evil little sister, who we will address later. As Sector 5's medic, she takes care of anyone who's injured, whether it be a kid, a hamster, or a stuffed animal. Although she's painfully oblivious to the seriousness of the mission most of the time, she has proven to be very resourceful on her own, such as when she saves the entire rainbow monkey species from the evil businessman who wanted to exploit them or when she puts an end to Chester's restaurant that sells kid burgers to sharks. While she isn't the most competent member of the team, she's just too cheerful and pure-hearted to rank any lower. Up next is Sector 5's leader, and arguably the show's main character, Nigel Uno, a.k.a. Number 1. His position as leader of Sector 5 is basically his entire life. He rarely takes a day off and would be out on missions 24-7 if he could have it his way as demonstrated in Operation Beach, when he refuses to relax at the beach with his team even for one day. As the leader, he's usually the most level-headed of the bunch, often having a better grasp on the situation than the other team members, and he's normally the first one to come up with a solution if and when their missions go awry. 
While number one is enthusiastic about his job, he is shown to be pretty stubborn and reckless, preferring to act on his own if the situation allows. Despite this, he cares more about his team than he does anyone else, including himself. Number one will always come around to save his team or any other kids when they're in danger, even after the delightful children temporarily turn him into an adult in Operation Grow Up. Though he's completely devoted to the kids next door, he has been known to bend the rules on occasion, particularly by disobeying orders from his superiors. However, his rule-breaking is always in the service of completing his mission and is never meant to harm anyone on his team. As far as his relationship with his father, Nigel doesn't really appreciate Monty's attempt to spend time with him in Operation Oompa. But he feels bad about being dismissive towards his father, and later saves Monty from a kid who steals people's dads. Their relationship drastically improves after that episode, and we can see their loving father-son dynamic in Operations End and Zero. He eventually surpasses even his own father as the greatest K&D operative, and is recruited to join the Galactic Kids Next Door, but we unfortunately will probably never see anything from that time period. We do know from Operation interviews that all members of Sector 5 were never decommissioned, and that Number 1 eventually returns to Earth and reunites with his team. He may be flawed, but he's definitely an excellent leader, a loyal friend, and a great kid. Next, we have the youngest character in the show, and the little brother of Number 4, Joey Deedle. Oh, those eco-friendly shoes everyone's talking about. Expensive, but... Uh, all right. His only significant appearance is in Operation Dodgeball, where it's revealed that he is the greatest dodgeball player in existence, even though he's just a baby. A villain called a dodgeball wizard kidnaps Mr. and Mrs. Beatles in order to draw out their son to challenge him to a match. While number four believes that he is the prophesized dodgeball champion, it really turns out to be his baby brother, who has to battle the dodgeball wizard in a game that almost levels the state. Joey single-handedly rescues his parents and defeats the wizard with a shot to his big fat nose. Because he's just a baby and has already saved a bunch of people and defeated an evil villain, we think it's only right to rank him this high. Up next is the chillest member of Sector 5, Abigail Lincoln, aka Number 5. Along with Number 1, she tends to be the most rational and level-headed member of the gang, using her common sense rather than jumping to insane conclusions about a strange situation. Before Nigel came around, she was the leader of Sector 5, but possibly because something bad happened while she was in command, Abby usually shies away when offered leadership positions, although we do know that she eventually becomes supreme leader of the kids next door after Nigel leaves for space. Although she doesn't share number 3's general positivity, she does have a very caring and motherly side, as shown in Operation Diaper. Abby also has a personal connection to the villains because her sister, Cree, is the leader of the teen ninjas who work for Father. We can see their sibling rivalry in episodes like Operation Space, where the two of them battle on a K&D spaceship while the rest of Sector 5 is off running from what they think are aliens. During that episode, we see that Abby is not above pulling some dirty tricks. As she pulls Cree into thinking they're about to have a nice sisterly moment, only to throw Cree into the trash chute, even though that apparently turns out to be a part of Cree's plan all along. Number 5's particular obsession is with sweets like ice cream and candy. She knows much about the history of certain sweets and goes on many Indiana Jones-style expeditions to retrieve rare dessert artifacts. However, this indicates her as being a bit greedy or overtly obsessed, as she's willing to risk her own life just to get one taste of the mystical fourth ice cream flavor mm. in operation. We'll Play just go ahead and start. Complicated. Yeah, uh, their loss. Yeah. Oh well. I'll, uh, hopefully, I'll uh, get. I'll fix it um, next Sunday. But okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get started on the best and worst moments of Conan Kicks X Store. Starting with the very first episode, Operation Kate. Oh, right so, yeah, for what I remember, um, the start of the episode, there are a bunch of kids um, uh, sadly saying happy birthday, or the giant birthday cake, as shows. But, oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, five yeah. care. Hmm? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Blitz. And enjoy the show because apparently, guess nobody else cares. Anyways, um, yeah, it shows uh, five to get uh, five characters together called the delightful children from down the lane, or just called delightful children. Uh, they uh 
refuse to uh, have the kids eat the cake. They only want them there because it's their birthday and stuff. And then comes five more kids titled the kids next door and stuff. So uh, they uh, do their best to try to stop the drive of children. Uh, there also comes a one little girl who, um, and when she gets angry, she comes uh, really big and strong, kind of like the Incredible Hulk. And that is a major problem and stuff. So, uh, yeah, they defeat the kind of kids next door and stuff. And it, um shoot the delightful children are down the line and stuff and that's pretty much it i don't know what else to explain it's all right just don't hurt yourself it's just <laughs> yeah all of this just getting to like the important part points and stuff but uh for me it took me a while to get up to this episode because even though i did <laughs> watch the very first one that also include other episodes on here like um, Disease He Does It from Kenny and the Chimp and also Operation Pool. I never really saw this at first. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Next one Operation Teeth. Okay, so in this episode, the kids next door um, want to get uh, some uh, candy uh, uh, just or some sweet snack, but they're thwarted by a mysterious villain. They have no idea who it is who cleans a uh, kid's teeth at night. Uh, their favorite uh, case of turns out to be closed, but uh, the guy that knows them uh, opens it because that's him and stuff. Well, before that, a dentist uh, try, offers them some toothpaste them, and they refuse. And then when they're in the candy store, um, uh, they're going to get like candy. And one of them was Taffy, and the uh, candy guy's like, no, 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 Taffy! And it, like went crazy and stuff. So later, um, I don't remember who it was. Um, oh, yeah, it was number three that got her teeth clean uh, while she was out by herself. So the... And then next door, find out who it is. His name is Night Brace. Uh, he's basically a Batman ripoff, uh, getting a, a kid's teeth clean and stuff. So they think it's a dentist who is offering them the toothpaste and stuff. And later, when they catch him, they found out it's a candy guy because he was once in a uh, dentist before, uh, and he just uses the candy store as a uh, cover up and stuff. And the dentist actually knows Night Brace, which they're actually brothers. And the reason he was fired from dentist in the first place because he tried to um, like put braces or something on a baby or uh, something like that. So, yeah. He's really obsessed with getting uh, teeth clean and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, in a way, despite him being a villain, at least he is like, well, getting, making sure people stay out. Like you know, have good hygiene and stuff, kind of. Yeah, that is true. But um, he's a bit crazy and stuff. And like the part about the baby, that's just too far, man. And his voice actor Tom Kenny actually nailed his role. Yes, one of the more impressive spectacles of his charisma. Mhm, mm that's right. All right, next one. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, Operation. One. Yeah, okay, no, okay, no, cool. No, What's no, got? No. Operation movies. So after, Ooh. after number four got fed up with watching the Rainbow Monkey movie, he decides to sneak into an adult R-rated movie. And when I say it like that, I do mean just regular R-rated, nothing too extreme. But yeah. anyways, um, he after many few attempts, he actually succeeds, but, he rev but it's revealed that R-rated movies are actually um, where villains meet up to develop plans and stuff. Yes. So after Toilinator comes up with a perfectly awesome idea that actually... Um, the villains really do love and stuff. Number four accidentally blows his cover, and he manages to um, manages to get away. And after um, thwarting the uh, toiletator a bit, so yeah, that's basically it. It is kind of a little bit entertaining and stuff. It's just it could have been more, maybe. I don't yeah, know. but it's good, cool to see villains from past episodes and stuff. So that's really cool. Yeah, I like it when they like st stuff like that, like an ensemble cast of characters colliding together uh, on that stuff. Yeah. Next one, Operation Mini Golf. Right. 
Alrighty. So in this one, um, the K and D are out playing golf or mini golf um, for those out there until they meet a guy named. Um, what isn't is his name? His, isn't it like it wasn't his name P- Pete P- Polinsky or something like that? Um. Oh, okay. So all right. So uh, okay. yeah, but the great Polinsky is his super villain alter ego. But uh, okay, Polinsky. Uh, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, Rupert Putkin. Okay, Robert Pumpkin. So yeah, they made him. And he is, he's uh, no, it's supposed to be like a famous golf player or something like that. And uh, um, number two is uh, like I uh, cr- think he's crazy about this. He says it's just a game, and this pissed off the golf dude. like, it's not just a game. It's not just a game. And that voice actor is none other than, than Rob Paulson, who is known for yelling as world, and he nailed it. So, uh, ever since um, number two, uh, like, beat him in golf a, a bit, uh, he actually um, decided to become a villain named the great Paul Linsky and actually captured him. And uh, he also found out that he stole uh, famous artifacts around the world, like the Eiffel Tower, um, the I think I can't remember. I think there's also Statue of Liberty. He used a shrink ray to use him as a golf course, and he also lives in his mom's basement, like any particular adult man would do. But anyway, so I can't the uh, find um uh number two they defeat uh Polinsky and stuff, and yeah, that's it. It was an alright episode. Podinski. <laughs> it's like it's like you're saying Polinski, like Rob Paulson actually becoming a super villain in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Operation okay. reports. So the Kissing Store are battling up against the delightful children with a mysterious box. Nobody knows what it is, but it is really important. And what's really cool about this is how um each member has a different perspective. Number one, it's all CGI and stuff. Number two is comic book style. Number three is all childish, childish and stuff. Hmm? Uh, I said cutesy. Yeah, yeah, like anything similar to what a child would illustrate. Number four, number four is, is anime, and, and number, um, is, number five is how oh, would I put I, this? I don't, know I don't know how to explain that. Like some kind of like some jazzy cartoon. One of those in a things. way, sure. Oh. But all but. But it's all revealed to be um, the box. It turns out to be just a pizza delivery. Yes, and um, the reason the report is the reason they're um, trying to get the uh, Donald children a pizza, or like uh, the reason uh, Donald children were after the candy because they actually switched orders because um, the Kinex next door actually had um, their pizza. And 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 yes. So the so the, what made what made them realize that he had the wrong pizza is because the delightful children ordered anchovies. Right. Yeah. And that's uh uh yeah. And at the pizza place, uh, the guy was like, uh, "Hey, where? Uh, here's your order. Hello." So yeah. And a really great um and a really great special edition for when it was number four's turn to explain his part of the story. That behind the scenes, um, D. D. Bradley Baker was taught by Ben Diskin to do those iconic anime yells. Oh, okay, that's cool. And that was actually a spoof on the popular anime Dragon Ball Z. Yes. All right. Next one. Operation Shave. All right, so in this one, uh, Kiss X Store um, get a red alert from uh, other Kiss K X Next Store, and they're uh, being attacked. And um, one of them uh, gets a mustache when they arrive, and they try to find out why they have mustaches all of a sudden. And more kids get mustaches, and on top of that, they have southern accents. So uh, they try to find a way to um, get the mustaches off. They find a way. And they also found out that the mustaches are actually sentient. They're actually alive and stuff. So that explains the cowboy accent and stuff. So uh, once the mustaches are free, uh, they actually sent it to uh, the Arctic Circle or Solar Frozen, where uh, Penguin actually got one of the mustaches and became a cowboy. So that's basically it. 
Yeah, yeah, one of the few more meh episodes to me. Yeah, I mean, it's okay ish, but it's kind of weird at the same time. Uh, next one, let's see. Oh, Munchies. Operation Munchies. Also, is there anyone backstage? Nope. Dang it. All right. Um, so, and this one, uh, uh, Candy uh, about to have breakfast until they find out their uh, favorite cereal, Rainbow Munchies, are is completely out. They need to find out uh, the where the uh, or the store has the boxes. None store has it except for one, and they only have one, which is a grocery store only made for adult villains. So they had no choice to go over there and get the Rainbow Munchies. So besides the kids next door, other villains um, come to get it, like Father, Crazy Cat Lady, Mr. Boss, Toilinator, et cetera, et cetera. So they fight to the death. Well, that's a bit um, extreme, but uh, you know what I mean. But So they fight to the death to f- get the munchies um, and stuff. So at the end, uh, Father thinks the candy have it, but one of them suggests they don't have it, and he asks where, who has it, and... He finds out that Night Brace was going to get the last box, and he asked him, are you going to eat those? And he said no, because of his crazy hygiene and stuff, he's going to destroy them. That shot the candy and the other villains. So number one suggested a uh, temporary truce until breakfast is finished uh, to get the last cereal box from Night Brace. And so they kicked the butt out of him and stuff. So they joined nice uh, cereal together, and um, Night Brace is shown giving them milk, and uh, tell them make sure you brush your teeth after every meal, and that's how the episode ends. It's a really <laughs> cool episode to see like villains and uh, the heroes like enjoy a nice time together or temporarily. Sure, and kick the butt off what so he doesn't have a butt anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that came out wrong, but okay, uh, the, op- Operation Naughty. Uh, so Ooh. the delightful children are out to ruin Christmas or more specifically have all the presents given to them and no children to like have any of their own. Um, so the candy, so the real candy team up with a group of a group of elves named, known as the Alpha Strike, which are the parody of the X-Men, and they just do everything in their way to stop um, the delightful children from destroying Christmas. So it just goes to show you that um, all the power of Christmas or something like that can just affect you really badly and just all it is is just, you know, <laughs> you can't let that get the best of you. Like it's not, it just teaches you that it's not really all about presents. It's just all about just, you know, being yeah, the typical uh, Christmas stuff. Uh, yeah. And it's really cool Christmas uh, special. Uh, well, I didn't like um, number three's um, character arc in this because uh, she wanted princess a series besides the delightful children. So just like delightful children, they um, jerry rigged a um, nice, uh, nice kid monitor thing and made her only person to have the presents. Something like that. Hey, I mean, like, what you expect? You just saw from the from the video and stuff, like a uh, temper wise. Yeah. Next one, Operation Lizzie. Ugh. Yep. Ah, so this is the first a- appearance of Nigel's uh, supposedly girlfriend, Lizzie, who has a crazy major crush on him. She won't leave him alone and stuff. So um, th- she has a device she puts on him, um, makes him um, uh, be loyal to her. And then um, the boys are trying to figure out why number one is acting like this. And then number three and number five realize it's a device called the boyfriend helmet, which is a special device that girls put on boys to make um, loyal to the girls and whatnot. But if it's um, attached to it, 
a person too long, it'll be there permanently. So over time, you can see like veins from the skin um, fused with the helmet and stuff. So um, they find a way to get off of him, or he did it himself. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, that's how it ends. Uh, even though like Lizzie is just like uh, one of those worst characters, you get like her voice after Brad Delisle Griffin. So yeah. Extremely. Mm -hmm. You got another one, Chief? Uh, what was it? Operation. Oh, yes. Operation Flushed. Ooh. Oh, I meant to put that as in. All right. So, yes. Miss, so, um, Miss, so, Mr. Boss, Crazy Cat Lady, Mr. Wink, Mr. Fib, and Night Brace attempt to in attempt to take over the kid the kids next door's tree house on but unfortunately um to, um Tor Lander gets involved and stuff but they they won't allow him because he's too pathetic to be called a villain so he them so after he at the boss sent him to get some coffee to distract them and stuff um they managed to get inside the tree house and Tor Lander vows that he will destroy the kids next door single handedly he gears up, and due to his own stupidity, he can't even he um he defeats the uh the villains who infiltrated um the the case next door treehouse. Only he is his butt kicked real candy. Yeah, I don't know how he mistook all of okay uh, because um. It, yeah, because he got fooled before by the candy. He thought the villains were a candy, so that he got confused. And yeah, he realized he screwed up when he found out. So yeah, <sighs> but you gotta part. love what? Yeah, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say you gotta love T. Bright Baker as Twilinator, though, because he is one of the legendary voice actors. Now you go ahead. <laughs> and and even though he did realize what he did. What really, what was the really screw up that he believed that he did, that he uh, failed at is forgot to deliver the coffee. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Like, all this time, uh, it just forgot to uh, get the coffee. It, it did not say, oh no, I kicked the butt arses of the villain instead of the KND. Don't worry about coffee, dude. Come on. But, anyways, yeah, it was an all right episode. Um, but yeah, that's all I could say. All right, next one, Operation Lice. Oh, all right. So, and this one, um, I forget about the plot. Uh, oh wait, here. Uh, well, yeah, uh, Abigail, aka number five, is um, infiltrating the Eiffel Mansion. Uh, she is stealing some from there, and when she comes back, uh, she's planning on eating nachos until her hair is mysteriously uh, getting itchy, and then she finds a um, uh, monstrous uh, lice in her hair, and it starts to spread. Everyone else's hair gets um, uh, eaten, as it turns out that her hair, a hat, uh, got switched uh, from a trap led by the delightful children uh, filled with a uh, monstrous lice. So um, uh, they, uh, I think they got uh, lice to the delightful children because they set up the trap. I can't remember what happened, but yeah, it's just shown that the delightful, uh, not delightful children, the candy's hair got eaten up and stuff. So yeah. Have you gotten lice before? <laughs> Heck no. And me neither. Not plenty to. But that's got to suck, too. Hair edging constantly. But that's got to suck, dude. But anyways, yeah, that's our episode. All right. Um, yeah, it's right in front of you. Oh, a Shogun. All right. So, yeah. So, number two and number four arrive at a cheese restaurant and start having a great time. But it all goes to crap when these cheese ninjas arrive and put everybody and make everybody slaves because since cheese is really um valuable to them 
until they meet up with the real brains behind the group, Shogun Rogueford, who, like, demands, like, is just really uh, obsessed with just cheese. Everything cheese-like, it's just is, is greatness and all that stuff. So they managed to get away, and um, number two defeats the cheese Shogun, pretends that he's actually going to take over the world, but does the typical jokes, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, you gotta love the guy. Um, I've got what his name is. He's voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson. I just said his name, Shogun uh, Roqueford. I'm sorry. Um, I was uh, trying to find a different episode. My apologies, my boy. Yeah, but, uh, okay, next one Operation Undercover. Oh, but what he was trying to say is that, yes, Kevin Michael Richardson was extremely epic as the villain, and as well as, I believe, Steve Bloom was the Cheese Ninjas, and if, hmm. if Blitz could help out, like I know that he is in the backstage and stuff, but you can be oh, yeah? to say some stuff. Well, he did say this or put this. Oh. Also, um, which one did you say? Um, undercover. Okay. Oh, I gotta put these in caps. Okay, so this episode starts off a center of five a chain a chain iceberg. The eleven children are about to smash them. Suddenly, laying the boy with the helmet, accidentally pulls a lever and sends the eleven children shooting off, saving the center of five's lives. On the way back to the treehouse, number thirty-five of uh, files the uh, by and flies by and tells Center Five to report moon base on the moon base. And number two seventy four tells them to share the op secret files to with an undercover spy. Turns out to be Landy, but number four attacks him, impulsively causing the rest to pull him off. Landy then explains how the adults as well as the children are able to manage due to drinking coffee, and is planning to cut off their coffee supply. The team. Uh, then has to see the coffee drilling rig. Sector 5 does a perfect impersonation of the Delphine children, which Lane comments that they're pretty good at. However, when the pastor says sheep, Cabo Joe rejects the cat, a password, starting to catch on and tries to shoot them down. Not out of the air, the team uses the candy substandard to reach the coffee drilling rig underwater. However, they are then attacked by Delphine uh, death charges, causing number 5 to fall out of the substandard. And the rest to surrender uh, back at the coffee drilling rig. Lenny attempts to attack Kaba Joe, but since Kaba uh, was running on six cups of coffee, he was too fast for them. Meanwhile, number five uh, rides a hammerhead shark into one of the coffee pipes underwater, causing it to break and fall and force her to drink the coffee. When she bursts out of the pipe, she is all hyped up coffee, frequently battles Kaba Joe. Although she uh, ran out of energy quickly, number five manages to trap Kaba Joe and whip Korean at the end. And real that the young children were the, there the entire time. It's real that Lenny would have to f deceive the candy and not sent to be an undercover spy, but steal the top secret files. After taking their Lenny back, the other children uh, throw sent a fee and back in the ocean. Number four starts to panic and since he can't swim. However, they are rescued by some ring where number two seventy four meets up with them atop a ship. Agreeing each other a uh, salute, except number four. Except number four, he doesn't uh, get it. He demands to know what's going on. Candy knew uh, is not why he trusts the delightful children. But so tough secret files got to be a bomb. And I'll open it. The entire coffee during rig was destroyed. And a giant explosion right before the bomb goes off. Four delightful children has to say, "Lenny, you're an idiot." And a risk explodes. Number four he suddenly gets it now. Replies that was really good. Yeah, yes, yeah, so, so, some great, some great stuff. Like, uh, uh, I try to find, I figure out uh, which one is the one where they go to um, Donald Trump's mansion along with um, the redhead one who is afraid of toenails. Okay, so, all right, the redhead one that's number that's number 86, I believe, and that one was Operation Fugitive. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, yeah, go ahead, put that there. Oh, 
Yeah, it's, it's better. All right, so Operation Fugitive, um, uh, eight, uh, number 86 is yelling at the um, uh, K&D because uh, she's known for yelling and stuff. Uh, she is not really into them that much. And well, okay, be specific because she re she hates the boys, but only like, you know, support. Yeah. Yeah, she hates the boys and stuff. But anyways, the main part of the episode that I want the uh, uh, K&D, uh, his birthday turned to um, uh, teenager, uh, like 13, for example, and uh, uh, any kid who transforms into a uh, teenager must be to convention meeting gets their memory wipe of candy, but he escapes. Um, he disguises himself escaping, so they are tasked to try to find him. And they think they're at the uh, Delilah Children's Mansion. Um, uh, so, well, there they find the fugitive, and they also find Java Children in pajamas. Uh, they have a jar of um, toenails. For some reason, as uh, so it turns out, 86 is afraid of toenails. She thinks it's gross. And after an uh, accidental knockup, um, the toenails shatter all over the place, even on 86. She starts having a mental freakout and stuff. Uh, so, uh, also, uh, they think they um, I'll let the um, fidget get away. As it turns out, um, a A6, a uh, catcher, the fugitive, well, sh so she thought. She also found out that uh, there was another person dressed up as the same as the fugitive, which is actually their leader. Um, I forgot. Uh, what's us call her oh, Rachel. Oh. Well, oh, okay. So, so like, okay. So, so I'm going there right now. And uh, it, it, and that was number, uh, yeah, it's uh, okay. Supreme Leader number three sixty sixty two. All right, like Fred said. So after uh, revealing it was her, uh, she yells at a six for like capturing her and stuff. Um, so I mean, how is she supposed to know that her boss was undercover too? I mean, she had the exact same outfit. Everyone would have mistaken that was um the fugitive and whatnot. So. But um, she did get uh, what she deserved because she uh, was being mean to the boys and whatnot and stuff. So, but it was a pretty cool episode and stuff. Um, it's so weird that uh, Delilah Children has a toenail uh, collection and jars. So I don't know who would collect a uh, doll. So, they're yeah, dull, they're creepy. Uh, oh, let's see. Wait. Um, I need help with the next next week's stream, like a. Hmm. Appar apparently so. We do need help because apparently the world, once again, is falling to freaking pieces. But, okay, next one, put down Operation Food Fight. Yeah, well, I already put down support. <laughs> I felt, oh, I, okay. I, I think that's the ones. So, so number five is sick, and number five is believed to be sick and stuff. So numbers one and two go over. They um uh okay, uh, but they stumble up upon um Cree. They suspect her to be up to something, so they search for um a bra, which apparently stands for battle ready armor, which makes the user like really good at fighting or some some something, something like that. So they try on Kree's bras, but only to find out that they're just normal. They don't really do that much. So <laughs> she she wails on him, and um, that's that the people you know say this is but no. At the end, all it is is just stealing Number Five's brain for information to take him down. Hmm. Yeah, it was pretty. Uh, odd episode. Uh, but at first it was nice to see Creed take care of her sister. But it's also weird that they made um armors out of bras. I mean, it's kind of cool if you ask me. Well, I don't want to wear it. Well, no. Nah, oh, I didn't mention. Well, I don't mean that part. I mean that it's cool that something so mundane can be used to turn you into something defensive. Sure. Okay, 
Uh, I'm trying to figure out four suggestions for blitz. Oh yeah, I got, I got the. Uh, yeah, you did say food fight, so we'll just. Uh, I give me four suggestions. Oh wait, 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 what, what? Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so yeah, like I know, like people don't don't really care for some most stuff. Just going out, not really like say hi once in a while and stuff. But that is the history of the world. It just things change. Again, don't know how many times this this has me. Uh, um. Okay. All right, so I wish you food fight. Um, the candy uh, playing on eating food at the cafeteria until they're thwarted by the villain lunch lady. Uh, this whole episode is about her singing and a punk uh, rock metal type um, song. It's really cool uh, hearing a great Delisle singing stuff because uh, she's also the voice of of uh, her. So I. Uh, yeah, so the whole episode of Santa Salt is the candy um, get attacked by the food, uh, but um, start finding it. And then later on, after um, a short defeat, um, uh, Lunch Lady comes up with the um, big giant food monster called the Slam, slam Witch. Yeah, Slam Witch. Um, and she herself dressed as a witch and stuff, so. Um, the candy get eaten up, but uh, they uh, destroy the monster from inside, and uh, she gets defeated. That was a really awesome episode because uh, of the um, rock part. So they really did a good job, and I bet um, uh, Great Delisle had fun doing this episode. And uh, yeah, the heavy the uh, the music was provided by this heavy metal band called Guar. Oh, all right. Okay, uh, what's in us? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, I got one. I got one. Yeah, all right. Operation Spank your booty. So, yeah, yeah so Count Spankula tells all about his, his job of just punishing children who do bad things and stuff. But he unintentionally goes to the goes to a house where he spanks an innocent child named Carlos, and he becomes the first villain to ever be put away for his crimes. So, in order to make up for that, he teams up with the K KND to right his wrongs, only to annoy them and stuff. So they devise a plan to um, get him in jail once more when they trick him into sending him over to the judge house to spank him and his wife. <laughs> Yeah. Well, um, they the candy almost nearly would have gotten away with it if number three shouldn't have been blabbing her mouth and that caused him to break free and spank the living crap out of him. Yeah, that was a bad move. Okay, so uh, I'm looking at results. What Blitz said. Um, I guess Sans number one. All right then. Oh, well, oh, well, it depends if I can get my streamer fixed next Sunday. If that's so, then I'll do a stream on my channel. I hopefully I'll pray. Well, but I, mean, so but I do appreciate you um, doing this stream for me. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Like and and like um. So you couldn't be you couldn't be able to like um get everybody you could. No, I guess not. I mean, I texted him on my channel and stuff. I mean, sent one to uh, Rose. I, I said a uh, YouTube link. I said, go to my friend's channel for StreamYard and stuff. So they're probably busy with stuff. So, all right. Um, oh, how about Operation Diaper? <laughs> okay.
Can you? Can you hear me? Okay, sorry. Me? Oh. Um, yeah. So in this one, um, the kids go to uh, the hospital because they are, are trying to have babies not become adults. So they catch every baby in the hospital available, and they also have a uh, up to uh, babysit the babies because that's because uh, they catch them. What else are they going to do? And so later on, um, oh, what's it? a gift? What's it? Right. Okay, you got this. Okay. Okay, but anyways, um, so as they try to take a baby, um. I uh, left eight, leaving uh, number five alone, uh, showing that her teeth are missing. It uh, turns out one of the babies uh, got her teeth, and with the teeth, uh, they could talk. Uh, so they uh, they turned out to be evil. I forgot why they were evil. Excuse me. So, um, uh, everyone else's is, um, teeth gets uh, taken away except for number one. So he is forced to sing the lullaby that um, number five did by coming down to babies. Uh, so uh, the baby um start fall asleep and um number five I tell I was about to tell um the kids next door where babies come from but the uh, episode ends but at the end credits um you can see shocked faces of the K and D and then um number one implies wait a minute babies don't co come from Philadelphia they come from New Jersey so <laughs> apparently she told them that's where baby came from from a state. Instead of the actual birth of the beast, come on. Uh, well, I mean, the only thing that I did like about it was yes, number five singing and Tara Strong as Baby Jackson. Yes, and yes. <clears throat> um, what else? Let's see. Hmm. I was that episode where? Hmm. What's that one where uh, Amber Four goes to like a Western type area? Oh, was it? Uh, uh, oh wait, oh what, what was it called again? Was it? Was it? Was it Ride On? Uh, shoot. I think it. I think it is Ride On. Hmm. All right. Uh, uh, I like it. Like it, it only works if you repeat it back. Okay. Oh wait, it might it might be it might be some other. I mean, maybe maybe it might. Have oh been, wait, wait, wait! I found it. It's Operation Nugget. Uh, or right, right on Sacoma, something like that. No, it's Nugget. <laughs> no, I'm like, I was talk, I was referring to something else. Oh okay. Ah. Oh shoot! What happened? Oh, uh, I think I, I think I, 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 I think I hit, I think I hit Luke. Uh, uh, I can't explain. Like it, it, the hits was so concussive that it causes me to blabber incoherently. What? <laughs> what? I think I got right on. Okay, but oh, okay. So in this one, um, number four is um, transformed to a Western dimension uh, where um, everyone of the uh candy uh are like cowboys and stuff uh so and their um main uh food source uh is nuggets i uh, like uh, something from chick i uh, like a mcdonald's like a chicken nugget so uh that's their favorite thing uh number four was about to eat one until they're thwarted by um the delightful children um of course they're the bag of ace um and this one uh and, his nugget gets taken away. Uh, they get jailed up, but they escape and defeat the Dwarf of Children. And then later on, um, number four gets go goes back to his world. I mean, it was all right episode. Um, well, I do remember that you didn't like the part where like the girls were like singing and dancing. Hey, I never said I didn't like it. It was it was kind of cool and cringy at the same time. Well, uh, Sydney was kind of catchy, but I seen I seen Lizzie with them. It's just weird. But anyways, um, it was an all right episode. I remember seeing it as a kid, and yes. yeah. All right, let's see. Ah, uh, Ooh, that's a good one. 
Yeah, so, uh, so, uh, yes. So, top, so, yeah, Tommy, um, number, number two's younger brother, he gets sucked, he was taking a bath, but he gets sucked into another world where, um, it's filled with boys who hate to take baths. So, it's taken, so, yes, he's joined upon this crew led by Captain James, James P. Dirtz, apparently James P. Kurt from, <laughs> Yeah, Star Trek. And so they're out to do battle with this giant duck, Moby Duck or something like that. I don't know. Something like that. But it turns out um, along the way, uh, the, di- the giant duck is being controlled by his mother who needs him to take a bath if it's the last thing that, he will, that she will ever make him do. And... It's one of those many episodes where it just turns into a dream where you think something did happen, but it's all in your mind. Yeah. And I was wondering who that uh, guy is voiced by because he sounds familiar. Yeah, it's Maurice LaMarche impersonating um, William Shatner. Oh, okay. I got it. I didn't realize it was Maurice there, but he did really good. And uh, as a special bonus, um, I, okay, so... so um. Dirt's mom, I I kind of thought that she was voiced by Candy Milo, but it was actually Jill Talley. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot that she's voiced by Jill Talley. That is really cool too. All right, next one, robbers. <laughs> and another one, the giant duck. <laughs> the giant duck just reminds me of Donald Duck. This the way I quacks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 robber. Yeah, robbers. As the one, I'll explain it. Oh, it's Robin food, right? By the way, that's lunch. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one, too. So uh, we'll talk about robbers first, then lunch. All right. So and this one um, uh, focuses on number four and number five on the way to school and a train like school bus. Uh, it's actually pretty cool. Um Apparently, it's like a spelling thing. Um, number four thing, he did a good job. Number five doesn't think so. Until a group of five kids dress up as cowboys, uh, plan on stealing homework. Uh, number four is trying to get his homework back on for the other kids. So, uh, yeah. And at the end of the episode, um, do have a children is the one uh, behind this and stuff. Uh, so, um, number four, uh, or, uh, guys, homework's on uh, from the Double children, uh, and the teacher thought the double children uh, did this and stuff, and they got an F because of number four's work. Dang. Yeah, but it was a pretty neat episode, like a almost western style. But uh, the school bus uh, still was cool. Being a train. Okay, now we can talk about talk about Operation Lunch. Uh, so what I can really remember about this is just um, during lunchtime, anywhere, anytime and stuff, there's these bandits, um, a parody of Robin Hood and his Merry Men. It's a villain named Robin Food who takes p- kids' lunches and gives them to the poor. <laughs> and, um, well, Lizzie, she just really wants Nigel and her to have a very special lunch that she made. She gets all bad crap crazy as usual, and that's where I kind of stopped. Because I can't really stand her in episodes like this, the, the her sister's wedding, and um, where the delightful children tr- turn them into mindless zombies. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it was the right episode. Even the fact that uh, Robin Food is voiced by none other than Rob Paulson. Yo ho! <laughs> uh, I think the episode is called Operation Award or something like that. Is where they get the um. Uh, no, films get the awards and stuff. I think I'm trying to find it. <clears throat> Shoot. Well, if you got another one, go ahead and write it down. Okay. Hmm, let's see. What do I got here? Wait, what the, the age? What? None of your beeswax about what it is. Hmm. Oh, oh, okay, okay. okay. But, uh, come on. Where is it? Beats. All right. The, the, yeah, this 
<laughs> so this kid who who thinks that he wants to be an who believes he's an actual king named King Sandy. He um, wants number three to be his bride. So she goes along with it because she believes that it's pretend. And so the rest of the candy, Sans number one, do battle with, it, with them. And uh, they just try to do everything to stop the wedding. And, and well, <laughs> it really does test number four since he really does want to save her thinking that he likes her and stuff but um she uh, like he gets all you know delusional about sh him uh, about like uh she just owes him a quarter as an ex for excuse yeah so all it is is just a cool sand battle and well that that's that's just it uh, he just like king sandy is really delusional too about him being an actual king and one number three to be his wife yeah. Next one, Operation Maurice. Oh, right, right in the name. How could I miss that? So in this one, as a special episode, as a half hour or hour episode, I think I can't remember. As a special one, because uh, Maurice. Um, one of Kunik's next door next door's greatest. Um, they're really sad. They turn a teenager and stuff. Uh, so um, uh, until uh, before he a uh, guy's Mary erased. He uh, said Kunik's next door rule and stuff. And then his Mary gets erased, and um, they say their final goodbye to him. And then um, uh, Candy uh, fight the teenagers as usual. Uh, that's their plan. Uh, uh, later find out that Maurice uh, pretended to have his memory wiped and he has a special um, segment on his own called A Teens Next Door um, where they're still like part of the candy but only teens and stuff so yeah that's basically it and what's really cool about this that Maurice is voiced by Carrie Payne who is known by Cyborg and Teen Titans and and wait, so he only pretended to have his memory wiped? I, I don't even remember that part. Yeah, he did. And, and well, this also hits hard because um, despite them like having to erase your memory and all that stuff, that really has to suck because, you know, since what they, what, what they do is very serious and stuff, but in mm -hmm. real life, at least we are lucky to try to remember everything cool that goes on in life. Yeah. Yeah, so it is Operation Awards that uh, one episode I was trying to remember, so go ahead and write that down. All right, so in this one, it involves the villains having a special thing of, called the Villain Awards. The can the um uh, uh, go undercover to go there and uh, stop them as usual. Um, so um, uh, taking down um uh, night brace and number four is actually disguised as night brace. Try uh uh again on it and stuff. So I see uh, past villains and stuff and um I I forgot. Oh yeah, like uh, some kind of bomb happens. There's like a snot explosion cause uh because. I think it was by um, the villain um, Colin Cole, I think. I don't can remember what happened. It's been a while since so I've seen it. But, yeah, uh, that's what happened. A big snot explosion happened. Um, a lady out front at the end credits um, show up. And uh, a couple in, like, uh, Colin Cole and a Toyinator. And then uh, out comes Father and the cast because... Earlier in the episode, um, him and Sticky Beard have a battle, and she asks him, "Are you um, bygones with uh, Sticky Beard?" And he's like, "Next time I see him, I'm gonna pull him to death." And Sticky Beard hear what he said, and he uh, he walks up to him and starts beating the crap out of him again. <laughs> Good one. Uh, oh no, no, wait, wait, wait. Is is isn't it? Like, I, I think it is. Let's see. 
So, so yeah, I believe the next one is a float. So the villains are having their very own um, uh, villain free villain barbecue and all that stuff until um, the candy arrived to thwart them, only to find out, whoopsie, all oh, crap, everybody's here, they're gonna kill us and stuff. <laughs> so um, they escape and they get in. They get they end up into a sea of a asp- of asparagus. And they get under attack by a great white asparagus, most likely a nod to Moby Dick. And Mm -hmm. they get taken away one by one, only to be eventually be rescued by, oh, look at here. Look what we caught up in. Hey, 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 get back here, you chicken. What? Guess who was in backstage? Who was? I'll give you a hint. Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. No, not him. No, don't oh. mention his name. If you mention his name, bad things will happen. Oh, I thought you were about him. Okay, all right, here's a hint. Dasher, dancer, prancer. Oh, lip- what? Uh, yes. So um, they eventually get saved by um, Sticky Beard, who say that even though he may hate him, he will like he won't let some a giant white asparagus do anybody in. Yeah, so that was really kind of him to do that. And it just goes to show you that edit, that every that everybody does have standards. Right, of course. All right, next one: Operation Camp. All right, so in this one, uh, the kids next door find a camp that um, have kids that they think they are brainwashed. Um, the guy said that nothing's going on. They're completely fine. Later, um, number two and number three find a baby skunk. They think it's cute and all. They want to take care of it. Number one and the other suggested they shouldn't because of sticky and all. And then they excuse me, later find out that the Kim Kardashian guy is actually evil and the kids are actually brainwashed. So they point right, out pause, to... Pause. What um, are you talking about? I'm in the chat. Huh? Oh, okay. That could, like, okay. So give us, give us a signal if, okay. Um, even though if you even if you are telling the truth, I'm not calling you a liar or something. If you if you really are saying that, oh wait wait. So yeah, somebody was in the backstage. Some um, I guess somebody was trying to pretend to be you, or you trying to switch back and forth or something, or or I don't, I don't know what happened. Somebody probably playing with us. Probably. But um, um thank but thank you for letting us know this. Okay. Uh, but anyways, um. Yes, um, the camp counselor turns out to be evil and wants to take over the world and stuff using brainwash kids until um, the pet skunk they named Bradley um, comes in and saves the day and they um, honored him to be a part of the KND as number six. So, yeah, that's the uh, first animal to ever become part of the KND, even though he's not a kid, he's an animal, which is really awesome. And ironically, his name Bradley because his voice actor is Steve Bradley Baker. So they, I did a real cool joke there. If that was intended to be it or or something, but uh, but nevertheless, yeah. Uh, 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 oh, okay. How, how how about how about this? Okay. Yeah. Operation. Pe- oh wait, you mind if I do it? Oh sure, yeah, yeah. Yes, of course. But the curse, as any French dude would say, but the curse. Yes, it would be our pleasure. You see a little busy here. But uh, you're trying to uh, type in tapioca. No, if I was trying to, I'd be having some difficulty. I'd be like, <laughs> it's right here. So, yeah, so tapioca. So, number two is telling, us, is telling his grandma about how he thwarted um, three three teenagers who called themselves who called themselves a team called the Senior Citizen Squad. Sorry, I'm flip flopping here, blah, blah. But, um, 
Grandma calls him a liar and beats on him and <laughs> and reveals that she and some and some two old dudes are the actual villains. So he goes on telling the other members of Sector V about what happened. They don't believe him and they oh wait, pause it for a minute. Hey Blitz. Hello. Uh, How's yeah. it going? Great. That's good to hear. And still, like I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm just here for a little bit. Uh, it's four minutes. I just have a few announcements. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we call it the first one. Fresh. Guess who's today's birthday? Who? Um, I'm sorry. Is your name Fresh? Are you black? <laughs> no, I know, but I'm curious. I might be after this. Uh, wait, say what? Nothing. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, yo, yeah. We'll see. We'll find out what nothing was, and if it was, if it was nothing, do you know what the nothing that I have for you? A knuckle sandwich. But but anyways, um, okay, whose is it? <clears throat> Lance. No, not Lance. Uh, Jeffy's 18th birthday. The day has finally come where I only watched that video. Well, all right, I'll check it out for myself. I'll see if it is something, and if it's not, then I was like, "Wow, what a disappointment!" Because I did, I did see an Instagram post by Logan that showed a sneak peek of a van that said "free candy." Oh well, good. Well, and in fact, that actually kind of sounds kind of nice. <laughs> candy bar. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, today. Uh, um, let's see here. Yeah. Today was also somebody's, you know, um, somebody passed away four years ago on this day. Right. Steven Hillenberg. I saw it on Instagram because, uh, one of the followers I, I follow posted a picture of him and because he voiced, used to voice Polly. Potty. Potty. I'm sorry. Po Polly, uh, Polly, what a cracker. My name's Potty. <laughs> Um, I didn't even know about that, but yes, rest peace to him. I was actually talking about Stefan, who played um Robbie Rodden. Yeah, um, right. right. Yes. Okay. I didn't even know he he passed away today, like you know, four years ago, and it's ironic because I posted that episode yesterday. Yeah. But um, well, we're glad that you did. Um, Speaking of which, uh, when are you posting your identity uh, video episode? I could do it after this. I mean, I, like all I'm gonna do is just edit out that part with that goop ball and stuff, and then uh, and then just just go on like that. I I okay. So um uh, oh, oh right 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 yeah what, tabioca yes no no I mean I was like what are we talking about yeah tabioca <laughs> oh okay so yes yeah, so yes the K the rest of the KD don't believe number two that he actually did fight off with the teenagers the teenagers are once again no surprise yes like yes like uh, number two's grandma and some two old dudes and they just switch in and out to uh, they use the anti aging cream to yes de age themselves into teenagers until it wears off it's really kind of like stupid like really how about you put on some more or just I do something to make it last in order to like, oh no, not now. So uh, they eventually uh, found out and then just it just ends. Like, okay, we believe you now. Yeah. I mean uh uh were you shocked that the teenagers turned out to be the old ladies, including his grandmother? I was and I was like, Well, like as a teenager, I was like, Whoa. Yeah. But it was an interesting episode, uh nonetheless. Um, but yeah. All right. Next one, Operation Tommy. Hmm. Also, my last announcement. Um. So you know about the Garfield movie that's coming in two years, right? Yeah. yeah. They just revealed four more cast members. I who? Oh, we did. Yeah. Right. Two of them I really don't know, and two of them I do know. Yeah. The first one is the actor that played Cobra Bubbles from Leon Stitch. Ooh. Wonder who he's playing. It said unknown character from behind the voice actors. Oh, I see. And, and the next yeah. one is uh, Nicholas um, Holt, you know, uh, who played Young Beast. Young Beast? Young Beast, you know, from X-Men. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that dude. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I, well, I already know what Young Beast is talking about. I didn't even want to specific, but, well, okay, let me go to Beyond the Forest Actors for Garfield, see if I can uh, see what you're talking about. Because, uh, yeah, Chris Pratt's playing Garfield, and Samuel Jackson, surprisingly, is playing his dad, which is <laughs> first time what, Garfield? Oh, yeah, the, I forgot that. Uh, it's supposed to, like, yeah, have a okay, dad. Okay, so where are your ears located again? I don't know. For me, um, for me, I live in a planet with people. Okay. Oh, Garfield says his name is Vic. Yeah, what well, Vic? No, it's Vic. No, we're not. No, we're not. Vic. That's what the voice actor says. It's Vic. Well, if it's uh, okay, like let's see who's the real dummy. <laughs> I am the one. Yeah, I, I don't recognize the other characters either. Hannah Weddingham, don't know her, or Cecily Strong. Well, he's well, he, like Blitz did say Lilo and Stitch, so it is big. V I N G. Yeah. Big. Oh, Ving. Well, it says Vic right here on the very voice actors. Well, it's uh, lying to you. You always go there, but no way. You always get brainwashed there. I, I don't mind. It's just a thing. But anyways, um, what's about our version, Tommy? All right, uh, hang on a sec. All right, so this one, um, a team of candy are attacking the villain, Common Cold, which is main power because he's sick. He uses his nose as a weapon to shoot snot out, which is completely gross. The entire team gets sick, so um. Uh, number two is little brother Tommy, which is an annoying pain in the ass, uh, wants to um, help uh, join up. Uh, but um, number two says no, but he has no choice because the others are sick. Uh, so they try find a way to um, stop uh, coming cold. Uh, Tommy still being a pain in the ass. Uh, but later, um, uh, coming cold is being treated with a chicken noodle soup uh, by uh, number two's mom. So, yeah, that's all I can remember. Yes, there's, there's one sick boy. This is a sick episode. It makes me sick to my stomach. It's a sickening. Yeah. Sick, sick I still can't believe they created that character. In fact, Ugh. I almost made a character based off of him, too. And so it's just, well, bleh, but. Tom Kenny, of course, spectacular. Just I the comic, and I always die when he says, "Could you kiss the ziggy?" Yeah. All right. Next one. Operation Hospital. Quick, doctor. This boy lost his ears. Um, he said that he doesn't know where he is. So just place him everywhere you want him to be. Stat. All right, so in this one, um, the candy are at the hospital. Uh, uh, they're uh, asking the doctors if uh, a friend of theirs is okay. Um, uh, the Cree uh, tries to uh, find his kid, and turns out it was the skunk. Um, uh, they made friends with, before Bradley. Apparently, it got run over a vehicle, and he was actually being operationed on uh, with robotic parts. Well, not really robotic parts, just different junk. But cyborg. yeah, yeah, cyborg. Thank you. Uh, now he's a cyborg. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, uh, so uh, yeah, the uh, Bradley uh, defeated uh, Kree, uh, being kind of a cyborg. Now he's cool and all. So that's all I can remember and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, it was, it was all right. Yeah. It's weird seeing Bradley as a cyborg now, but that's what the episode wants. All right. Uh... Uh, oh, okay. I, okay, I got one. Yeah. So, yeah, Operation Hugs. After number four, get... At the number four, keeps on calling Rainbow Monkey stupid because, well, you know, typical him. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, like, he is taken to meet Rainbow Kong. Apparently, yes, King Kong as a Rainbow Monkey. And uh, 
he starts getting attacked to him. Number four tries to teach him how to be all tough. Eventually, um, he makes he takes him off for reasons why I don't really remember. Only to find out that he defeated him with love and hugs and all that good good. Yeah. So, so after being ridiculed by numbers one and two, he. I, right out of the blue, just calls him stupid again, and that takes off Rainbow Combat more. Yeah, and about that stupid part, I read in a fandom of the episode. Um, the moms um, didn't like like it because the uh, a use of stupid too many times because you know the time that stupid was a curse word. Oh, for the love of <laughs> come on! Like the first time I ever like hearing stupid as a curse word, I think it was either what. Like if I was like imitating either SpongeBob or from, um, what, what, what like what's another one? Um, my life is a teenage robot or. Oh, that's a good one. My life is a teenage robot because of the kindergarten episode. Uh, she said the ant word. Ugh. Yeah. I'm just glad I'm out of that phase where I don't have to say stupid or shut up, which I can now because I'm 21 years old. But anyways. Uh, next episode, we'll talk about a couple more episodes, then we'll end the stream from here. Next one, Fast Food. Oh, yes. Yeah, good one. All right. <laughs> That's good. All right, so in this one, um, they fu- uh, the candy... Uh, Find out about a new restaurant in town. Number three goes in there to uh, get undercover. As it turns out, the guy that was the campus counselor before is using a restaurant to um, uh, give kids uh, big um, burgers and give it to sharks. So three gets captured and about to give it to a shark family um, who is voiced by Kevin McRidgeson and Gr- wait, Great Lyle, right? Eh, eh, eh. Okay, so Kevin Michael Richardson was the dad, Chris Summer was the mom, and Tom Oh, Chris Summer. Chris Summer got it. Thank you. Thank you. And Tom Kenny so, was yeah. The baby. Yeah, right, right. So, yeah. Um, number three almost got eaten by the shark, but she actually escapes um, uh, without the Cam Kessler dude knowing about that. And then um, other sharks um, swarm around the. Um, a restaurant without because he doesn't have any uh, kids to sell the sharks too. So yeah. You also forgot one important thing. What? Um. Uh. Okay. Well, all right. I'm just. There's no other way to put this, but um, they celebrate number ten. No, uh, like yes, number three is tenth birthday. Right. 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 I forgot because Ben wants to see the episode and. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. And besides her birthday, it's also the shark's son's birthday, which is why they're going to uh, the restaurant in the first place. Well, not really. Just a coincidence. Yeah, but still. <clears throat> really good voice talents of Kevin, Chris Summer, and Tom Kenny. Uh, really awesome. Especially Kevin Marston as a shark. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, and I guess it's due to them that I've that I learned how to do that when characters are like underwater or so or some stuff like that. All right, another good one. Um, hmm. Ooh, there's a lot. It's hard to choose. Hmm. Operation Pink Eye. Ugh. All right, so in this one, um, it's a detective style episode, uh, focusing focusing around um number two, investigating why kids are getting um pink, pink eye, and um. Uh, yeah, as a, as one of the grossest episode, and I'll feel why because um, he's eating uh, his favorite treat. Uh, he doesn't know what the greens are until he finds out uh, about the nurse um, um, using the pink eye. Uh, every kid with a pink eye using them to create the treats that um, number two is eating. 
and yeah, and at the end of the episode, um, the nurse that was using the stuff to make um, the streets and stuff gets a uh, uh, pink eye herself. So yeah, it is a really gross episode. Oh, in the right. part, in the part where uh, number eighty six sneezed. I mean, like, yeah, that's the feeling. I'm mean, like, it was both funny but gross at the same time, though, because uh, yeah. Like, oh god. Yeah, I'm sorry to bring that up, but it's an episode. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, um, uh, oh, what was the episode? Uh, no, not that one. Um, uh, what was it? Ah, uh, was it? I try to figure out which one was where they have the dinner party that, um, someone and the, um, yeah, you, know. but you gotta explain more. I'm trying to think. But... Uh... Ah, clues. Do clues. <laughs> what? No, dude. All right, so on this one. Uh, number five, uh, number and not number five. Number two and number three's family uh, both have a dinner at um, number two's house. They're planning on having a turkey, a chill, a uh, black owl and curse, and then um, uh, number three's uh, special uh, rebel monkey uh, dog, specifically for a dinner party. Uh, previously, um, her little sister uh, wanted to play with it. She didn't uh, wanted to do it, and then after the black owl, as it turns out, the doll got stuffed with a fork and she's wondering what happened to it so number two comes a detective he tries to figure out who done it uh, uh, one of the suspects he said was number three and she said she'll never do that and he said or will you and she enraged uh, after hearing that so he backed off and then um, he also uh, it's your, uh, number three's parents see if they're the ones and then her father bursts out crying. He, he just wants um, the kids to have a good time, be happy, and not fight. And her mom um, said that she only powdered her nose, which is weird that she did that in the dark. Then later, I uh, find out um, that it was her little sister the whole time because she never let her play with the doll. She ends up getting grounded. And it turns out the turkey was actually eaten by number two, which pissed off the granny, and he's getting beat up by the granny. Zombie. Yeah. It's a pretty interesting episode. I love, like, mystery-type episodes and whatnot, so, yeah. Yes, uh, all right. Uh, last one to talk about Operation Spakenstein. All right, so this one is a sequel to Operation Clues, where um, uh, no, uh, number three's uh, a sister digs up um, uh, her doll from the grave um, uh, and then catches Banculot and uses his powers um, to um, create the monster of the toy with um, Banculot's powers because his only powers. What? I see Bobby. You get him on Bobby. Huh? What? <laughs> I was like, oh, it's just like from SML, like when he got spanked. Or the, that's how you get out of spanking. Oh, okay. But anyways, uh, yeah, because spank has only power is to spank, so that's what the monster only does is to spank. So he uh, spanks a. Every kid he finds, and then um, number two tries to uh, um, calm it down and. Um, turn back to normal. Um, uh, otherwise, and then uh, Spanky Light got his powers back, and then um, ends up having a dinner party uh, with the um, Sanban and uh, number two again and stuff. So that's basically it. But at the end of the episode, uh, number three sister Mushi got um, 
was take well not taken away. She goes with the um Sand King from the beach episode as reasons. So yeah. This was an okay stream, um, even though I didn't do it on my channel. Again, I appreciate you doing it for me, buddy. Well, yeah, like I had to do something. Like we all know that Blitz said, like you know, if, if it wasn't due to well, on somebody and stuff, but yeah, I I just I just couldn't like let 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 like this be like nothing or something like that. Yeah, but it's good to talk about episodes we've seen and stuff. So. All right. Um, I'll see you next Sunday. Hopefully, I can get my stream you know, working at that day. So I'll see you next time. And yes, I'm um, see you there. And yes, I'm gonna take this and edit it and then fix everything. So bye. All right. Bye bye.